The first two coronavirus deaths in the country are in Western Washington, all linked to the same Kirkland facility. Yeah, masks at, were greeting me, masks in the room, so. What about your mom? Did she have a mask on? No. Tonight, the urgent effort to stop the spread as more and more people test positive in this coronavirus emergency. And good evening, I'm Steve Rabel. Tonight, there are a total of 10 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in King County. That number includes the two people who died. Three people tested positive for coronavirus in Snohomish County. And around the region, several schools and businesses are closed tomorrow over coronavirus concerns. But the focus right now is in Kirkland, where six people with the virus have been living at the same nursing facility. Our team coverage starts with Cairo 7's Deborah Horn live in Kirkland. Debbie, this coronavirus outbreak really close to home for people there. And that is what people are telling us, Steve. Late this afternoon, we watched medics load a resident here into an ambulance. We don't know if that person is among these newly confirmed cases. But as you might guess, what is happening here is affecting a lot of people. This is now ground zero in King County's fight against coronavirus. In all, six residents of the Life Care Skilled Nursing Facility have tested positive for COVID-19. One of them, a man in his 70s, died yesterday. The second person in King County, indeed in the entire country, to succumb to the respiratory illness. I did not expect to get in. No, they told me I wasn't going to get in. Kim Fry came from the Metal Valley, hoping she might be able to see her 89-year-old mother, a retired nurse who is being rehabilitated rehabilitated here and she did given a mask before she was allowed inside actually I kind of was paying attention walking through and um, I didn't hear any coughing every it's kind of quiet in there how is your mother doing she's doing good yeah she was um, yeah yeah like I said better than when she came in three weeks ago she says the family considered moving her because of the coronavirus but as long as she's receiving good care here you know that's what's important. Late Sunday afternoon, we watched medics in masks take a resident away by ambulance. Life care officials tell us seven residents with respiratory illnesses are being monitored for the virus. All of this has hit the city of Kirkland hard. 25 firefighters based at Fire Station 21, a mile and a half from Life Care, are in quarantine. Two police officers who accompanied them are quarantined too. So the city has opened its emergency operations center to coordinate its response to the crisis. We are doing a number of things right now, including supporting our firefighters that are in quarantine, uh, as well as making sure that we're providing for staffing. Now, I talked by telephone to a life care center worker who is also under quarantine. She told me by telephone that she is sick and she has been tested for the coronavirus, but she does not have the results yet. And also, the city of Redmond is being hit hard by this. Seven Redmond medics are in quarantine, too. Reporting live in Kirkland, Deborah Horn, Cairo 7 News. The second person to die from the coronavirus was a patient at Evergreen Health Medical Center in Kirkland, where five others who have tested positive are currently being treated. Cairo 7's Michael Spears continues our team coverage from Evergreen Health with details on today's new cases. Michael? Well, all new King County cases involve people who were brought here from that Kirkland Life Care facility, where last week 16 nursing students spent time, which led their school to temporarily close its campus underscoring the increased risk facing health care workers. On Sunday, another one. A group wearing masks and gloves, willing a patient away from Life Care Center of Kirkland on a stretcher. These health care workers and others on the front lines of a possible outbreak at this Kirkland facility with increased risk of exposure to the rapidly spreading virus confirmed in several people here already, including a worker. At Evergreen Health Medical Center in Kirkland, Four new patients were announced Sunday from Life Care. A woman in her 80s, a woman in her 90s, a man in his 70s, and another man in his 70s who died. The three people still alive are all in critical condition, according to the health department, and all have had underlying health conditions. We had multiple students there for multiple days. Dr. Amy Morrison, president of the Lake Washington Institute of Technology, said 17 students and four faculty members did internships and clinical work at this same Kirkland facility last week and then returned to classes on campus. On Sunday, campus was closed and the president said it would remain closed Monday and Tuesday for cleaning, 
while all large campus events this week would be canceled out of an abundance of caution. We've certainly drilled and prepared for emergencies. We did not think that we would be in the community that this seemed to hit hardest right out of the gate. Now tonight, the Lake Washington Institute, Institute of Technology said they have been in contact with health officials on guidance as far as self-monitoring for those students and faculty or who were at that life care center in Kirkland. For now, we're live in Kirkland. I'm Michael Spears, Cairo 7 News. New tonight, the company F5 is closing its Seattle headquarters tomorrow because of the coronavirus. The company says an employee was in contact with someone who tested positive for the virus. Tomorrow, they will sanitize the offices. Schools around the area are also being extra cautious, including one that decided to close tomorrow. Hazen High School in Renton is shutting down for cleaning and disinfecting. The superintendent says a student and their parent are being tested for coronavirus after experiencing flu-like symptoms. The school district will also notify families whose students may have come in close contact with those patients. Kentwood High School and Covington Elementary School will also be closed. The Kent School District says a student's parent is waiting to be tested for coronavirus. The schools are closed tomorrow to be cleaned and disinfected just to be safe. Frank Love Elementary School in Bothell is also closed tomorrow. A school staff member is being tested for coronavirus. We will continue to update the Cairo 7 app with the latest school and business closures. When it comes to protecting yourself from coronavirus, many wonder what really works and what doesn't. Cairo 7's Tracy Leong joins us now. And Tracy, you spoke to a doctor who is helping us sort out fact from fiction. Well, Steve, we've seen people clear the shelves when it comes to buying disinfectant wipes and face masks. I met with an infectious disease specialist who explained what's effective when it comes to protecting yourself and your family from coronavirus. Disinfectant wipes claim they kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses. But does that include coronavirus? Basically, any EPA approved disinfectant is effective against the coronavirus. Dr. John Lynch, the medical director for the Infection Prevention Program at Harborview Medical Center, recommends using wipes, especially in shared spaces. When you're at work, at school, or at home, really keeping your environment clean. And that's sort of, when I say that to people, keeping the clutter down. So you can use tools like wipes to clean off environments. And I think that's really effective when you're at, uh, particularly at workplace. What about when you're in public? You're at the mall, you're at the airport, you're at a restaurant. I think those are great opportunities where uh, using, washing your hands a lot is really, really important. You have to remember that these viruses are transmitted not just by breathing in what people cough, but also touching surfaces that people have coughed onto and then touching your face. And so the more you wash your hands, the less likely that is to happen. So out in public spaces where you can't wipe everything down, that works really well. Another form of protection is a face mask, but Dr. Lynch says these are not effective since most people are touching infected surfaces and then transferring the virus to their eyes and nose. I recommend that people do not wear masks walking around. They're really good if people are sick to keep those what we call droplets, the wet stuff that we cough out and sneeze. For those people, it works really, really well. But for healthy people, it doesn't help them at all. There is still no vaccine to prevent coronavirus disease. Dr. Lynch says for now, people should avoid contact with those who are sick and when they do get sick, to stay home and prevent the spread of infection. I'm Trace Leong. Steve, back to you. All right, Tracy, thank you. It is a run on supplies like hand sanitizer and dried food at area grocery stores. Parking lots are packed as if it's Black Friday at stores across western Washington. Cairo 7's DD Sun found empty shelves at places like Fred Meyer and Costco. It's pretty crazy in there. <laughs> Shoppers are loading up their carts at Costco, some wearing masks and gloves as they snapped up stuff that might come in handy if they have to quarantine. There was no toilet paper, which I also was hoping to get. There was only a few things left to paper towels that I was able to get. Still some bottled water, but it was almost gone. So, and no, no rice. Yeah. <laughs> All the rice is gone. <laughs> it's a similar situation at Fred Meyer in Kirkland. We needed uh, some uh, ground meat, and then we left the aisle, and there was nothing there. Meat shelves empty. And if you're here looking for hand soap, rubbing alcohol, or even bleach, you're out of luck. You come in late, you're going to get screwed and can't buy anything. Shopper Paul Smith is wiping down his grocery cart. You can't even find hand wipes anymore. Yeah. They're not in the stores. The yeah. I yeah, heard it's at a mess. Costco, it was, it was a chaos yesterday. Um, He's doing this not just to protect himself, but also potentially others. My wife is homesick. 
At this point, our doctor is saying she's got the flu or a fever and not coronavirus, okay. but God, we don't know at this point. The supply shortage extends to face masks. Earlier this week, even before the latest rash of cases and first death, we showed you totally empty shelves at Home Depot. We do inventory for Home Depot as a third party, though. Everyone was asking for face masks, so I'm not surprised at all. Mm -hmm. But it's a pretty big deal, so, so I'm here, and now I'm getting scared because it's coming. Others are turning to Amazon, trying to shop online, only to find masks sold out there, too, or listed at astronomical prices. One listing had four boxes priced well over $1,000. Yeah, I mean, it's wrong, That's but that's what companies do. Amazon is trying to crack down on price gouging, and doctors are telling you unless you are sick or directly handling sick patients, you don't need a mask. Not buying masks so that the hospitals who really need them should have them. Some employees I talked with both here and at Fred Meyer told me they don't know when things will be back in stock. In Kirkland, D.D. Sun, Cairo 7 News. Governor Jay Inslee with the Department of Health and Emergency Management will address the state's response to the coronavirus tomorrow afternoon. We'll bring you that live at 3 o'clock on air and online.